Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to do a DIY gel manicure at home in this French fade style. I'm also going to share some tips on how to make your gel manicures at home last longer, as well as tips for thin nails and how I was able to grow my nails out to this length. I've already removed my gel polish and I have a removal video in case you need to remove yours. So check out that video before you watch this one. Otherwise, if you have bare nails, we can get started. On this hand, I've already filed and shaped my nails. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly show you on this hand. I'm going for a more coffin shape and this is kind of grown out. So I just want to refine the shape a little bit more. To get a coffin, you just want to go straight across. And as I'm filing, I'm just doing it in one direction because this is my natural nail. If we go back and forth, it's going to weaken our nail and damage it more. So just one direction. And for the sides, I'm just going to go downwards. So you can see it's a little bit curved. I just want a straight line across. Okay, so that's roughly the shape that I like. I'm just gonna do the same to my other nails really quickly. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'm going to work on my cuticles. So I'm just going to apply a cuticle remover. You can use any brand for this. I just like this one because it has a little dropper tool. Just work that in your cuticles. And I also like to use a little wet towel so you can get these little compressed towels. I think you guys may have seen them at restaurants. They look like a little tablet and you can just apply a little bit of water to inflate it. Kind of looks like a marshmallow. Okay, so that's pretty damp. Just unravel that. Okay, so keep that aside because we're gonna need that after we push back our cuticles. Now there's all different types of cuticle pushes on the market. If you're a beginner, I recommend something like this. It's not super sharp and it's pretty easy to work with. So there's a straight end and a slight curvier end. So I'm just gonna use a straighter end first and then just use that to push back the corners of my cuticle. You can kind of start to see some of that cuticle lift up or that white part there. And then I can flip to the other side on the curvier end and just kind of shape my cuticles whilst I push it back. So I kind of want it nice and arched. That way when we apply the gel polish, it looks really nice and clean. If you feel like your nail is getting a little bit dry, go in with that damp wet cloth just to moisten it up and then continue pushing your cuticles back. Another thing I like to do is just wrap that towelette around my thumb and then just use my nail and that towel to just clean up any of that cuticle. So that looks pretty clean. Let me show you the other tools. So this is more of like a professional type of cuticle pusher. On one end, it has like a curvier, scoopier end, which makes it really easy to get that rounded shape around the cuticle. And on this end, it has a sharper sort of end to just lift up any of that cuticle that may be still remaining on the nail plate. So you use it the same way, except that this is a little bit sharper than the previous one. So you don't wanna be pushing too hard or at a wrong angle. If you push too high and you put a lot of pressure, it's gonna damage your nail bed. So you just wanna like do it softly back and forth, but lay it sort of like more flat towards your nail plate. Also, as I'm pushing, you can kind of see, I'm just using my hand and not like pushing back and forth with my arm. The motion is quite small and the pressure is very light. Again, if it's getting a bit dry, use that towelette. Now I'm gonna go in with the sharper end. This is good for just making sure the sides are clean. So you can kind of see that it's lifting any of those side areas up. And then just use it to follow the shape you've created. You can see all that dead keratin. Do the same on the other side. 
and then you can just wipe away any remaining cuticle with the towel so I'm just gonna quickly do the rest of my nails my cuticles are pretty clean because I do my nails regularly but if you haven't had a manicure in a long time you might find that you get a lot more of that cuticle lifting up and, and a lot more of that white bit coming out the aim of this is just to make sure we clean the nail plate that way our gel polish will last a lot longer and also you just want to get a nice curve around the cuticle so that when you paint it it looks a lot neater after I've pushed back my cuticles, I'm just going to have a look to see if I can just cut off and nip away any of the loose bits. So I'm just using my cuticle nipper. Now this is really sharp and it's a little tricky to do. So I feel like this step is definitely optional. If you're comfortable going in and just removing any of those like white bits, go ahead. It will just make your manicure look more professional and it just looks a lot cleaner. You don't have to cut a whole strip off, just cut away any of the white areas that you see that may be bothering you. If not, you can just leave it. So that's pretty much my cuticle work done. I'm now I'm just going to buff away any shine on my nail plate and then also just make sure the free edge, all these little frayed bits a buffed away. I actually don't need to buff my nails too much because most of the shine has been removed from when I took off my gel polish. But if you're working on natural nails and it's quite shiny, just use a buffer to lightly buff away the shine. You don't have to excessively buff it. I'm done with my prep now and we can move on to the gel polish. Now, depending on the nail system you're working with, you might have to apply a prep, which is also known as a dehydrator. This removes any oil off the nail plate. You can also use acetone too, it works the same. And then primer or bonda, which adheres the gel polish to your nail plate better. So I'm just using the ones from Kiara Sky. There's also other products available on the market where you can just go in with the base coat. You don't need to apply these additionals. So this is the prep. I'm just going to apply on my nail plate. And then I'm just going to apply primer or bonder. You don't want to touch your skin with this. And kind of just let that dry a little bit before applying your base coat. For my base, I'm using the Kiara Sky base coat. Now when you're working with gel polish, you just want to remove the product on one side of the brush and half on the other. So one side has a small amount of the polish. So for this, I'm just going to apply it to the middle part of my nail first, cover that to the free edge, and then work closer to the cuticle. You don't want to have too much product on your brush, otherwise it's going to run. And then don't forget to do the sides and free edge. So for this, you only need a thin layer. So make sure you don't load too much on your brush. And the beauty with working with gel is that it doesn't set until you cure it under the light. So take your time. You can see I got a little bit on my skin. I'm just going to use my nail to wipe it off. And then you want to cure this under the lamp for 60 seconds. I'm using the Kiara Sky lamp. Now, if you have very thin nail plates, you might feel a heat spike. If that's the case, just remove your hand and put it back in. Another thing you can do is just press down on your fingertips to release some of that heat. Okay, this next step is optional, but it's what's helped me grow my nails this long without breaking. So I like to do a, another coat of gel to add some strength to my nails. So I can either use something like this from D-Gel. If you've watched some of my other tutorials, you would have seen me use this to do overlays. I really like the packaging to this and you can kind of pump out a little bit and you can kind of tell it's pretty thick. So that's gonna help to add some strength. Another product you can use is a builder gel. It's probably easier the ones that come in a bottle so you don't need extra brushes. And the one I've got here again is from Kiara Sky and it came with their jelly tips kit. It has a thicker consistency than your base or top coat. So I'm going to paint on a layer of this. 
Again, you don't want too much product on your brush, but a trick is I'll do like a thin layer first. This is gonna be like a slip layer so that when I put more gel on top, it acts like a guide and the gel only flows to where I've placed the slip layer. After that, I can go in with a little bit more gel and just kind of guide that down my nail. So I'm not really brushing this on, I'm just kind of like using very light motions to guide the gel. And making sure it doesn't run onto my skin. And then I'm just going to turn my finger upside down to just draw all that gel towards the center where I need strength in my nail. And then I'll just flash cure that with a little lamp. So now you can see that it's added that additional thickness to my nail compared to my other hand. You can see how thin my natural nail is. So this is a great trick to add some strength to thin nails. You could also perfect the shape of your nail by looking at it from all different angles, for example, sideways. If I feel like I need a little bit more product there, I'll just slightly touch the brush on that area. I want it to have a nice soft arch and just build up that thickness around the center. And when you put your fingers upside down, the gel will naturally flow towards the center. I recommend you curing your nail after each finger, especially if you don't have like a little light like this, just pop it in your nail lamp for at least 15 seconds. That's how you flash cure it. After you're done with one hand, you can fully cure that under the lamp for 60 seconds. For the gel colors, I've picked out this shade called I Do, which is like a peachy color. And then we've got a milky white, which is a little bit more translucent. You could also use pure white as well. I may mix some of it together for the French fade. Otherwise, if you can't find a milky white and you've only got a pure white, you can mix some of your clear gel with that just to dilute it a little bit and make it a little bit more translucent that way you get a nicer fade so i'm going to apply the first color i do and i'm just going to do the same thing i'm going to just wipe off one side of the brush and then wipe off half of the other side so we're left with a little bit of polish then i'm going to start painting i'm going to just paint half of the nail first get most of the product there and then do the free edge whilst I'm here. And then with whatever's left on my brush, I'm just going to work it into the cuticle slowly. Now this brush is a little bit rounded, so it makes it a little bit easier when we apply the polish. But if you have like one of those straight square brushes, go very slow and you don't want a lot of product on there. You want to get as close as you can to the cuticle without touching it. Another tip when painting your nail, you don't want to angle the brush too high. You want it a little bit more parallel to your nail. Also, just make sure and check the sides that none of it has overflowed. If it touches your skin, it's going to lift a lot faster. What also helps is pulling back the skin on the side so you can really see your whole nail plate and you make sure you get as close as you can to the sides. It's a little bit tricky when you do it on yourself. So that's the first layer done. I'm going to cure that under the light for 60 seconds. Let's quickly do one more coat. After that, we can start on the faded ombre. For this, I'm going to be using an ombre brush. I found this on AliExpress. And it's a pretty good brush for doing ombre. It almost looks like a makeup brush, to be honest. I'll link it for you guys below if you're interested. So I'm gonna use Milky White and I'm gonna paint just a little bit over halfway down my nail. Don't forget the sides and the free edge. You can see that the white is quite translucent, but that's what we want. Then I'm gonna get the brush and just blend and tap out that edge and it's pretty much disappeared. So we're gonna have to do this a few times to create that nice faded ombre effect. But I find that this way is so much better than using a sponge because the sponge can get pretty messy and it might touch your skin, so you need to clean it up. Whereas with this brush, it's a lot more precise and there's no cleanup. 
So that's our first coat. Go ahead and cure that for 60 seconds and then we're gonna do the second coat. Now we're gonna repeat the same steps but paint a little bit lower, just about one thirds down the nail. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go in and just blend that line away and then cure that again. Now I'm going to apply pure white and I'm just going to apply that again about a third way down my nail. Don't forget the free edge and sides. So now after I blend this, it's going to look more contrasty against the pink. Back to my brush, I'm doing the same thing. Blend that line out. So by the third layer, you should get a fade that looks like this. It's very soft. If you want it to look more contrasty, then you can use like, like a darker pink or peachy color. Otherwise, you can go in with one additional layer to enhance that white tip. This time I'm just applying it a little bit lower and do one final blend. So that's what my nails are looking like. If you look super closely, you can kind of see little small fine dots, but don't worry because when we put top coat over that, you won't be able to see it and it'll look like a nice soft fade. For top coat, I'm using this non-wipe top coat Let's cure that hand one more time. On my right hand, I'm going to show you a more contrasty version using a deeper peachy pink. This one is from Angel Pro and it's number seven. So that's both hands done with the French faded ombre effect. Let me know which side do you like better. Do you like the first one with the lighter pink or do you like the more contrasty version with a little bit of a deeper pink? Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found these tips useful. Be sure to check out some of my other nail tutorials if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe and click like. And yeah, I shall speak to you guys next time. Bye.